What's up? What's up? Hey guys, thank you so much for the warm welcome, you know. <laughs> you know, it's great seeing the energy today, guys, and you know, I'm looking back today, you know, and uh, it reminds me of myself when I was first getting started, right? So I appreciate it so much, guys, and I'm taking a lot of energy from you guys. So guys, um, first of all, I want to thank Chris Record, Jim Piccolo, and all the staff here at Techademics, the employees, and anyone else that has contributed to setting up this amazing event right here today. Just amazing. You know? And guys, you know, today I'm gonna show with you, or I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna explain to you as much as possible as I can, so it's gonna be a lot of detail, it's gonna be a lot of note taking, but guys, you know, if you feel like you're, you know, you're not capturing anything, don't worry about it guys, it's about, you know, listening in, and then, you know, looking back at the replays, also, anybody on Facebook Live, welcome to the stream. And anybody get, just getting started in e-commerce, you know, this is a journey, guys. Take your time with it. And we are going to grow you guys so fast, you know, once you put the steps into, into place. Okay, guys? So before I uh, go into the six pillars, guys, I'm going to uh, just go into a bit of introduction about who I am, where I came from, right? Just to give you a bit of background, right? So Damien Coughlin is my name. Um, the Irish marketer, um, born and raised in County Cork, down in the very, very bottom of Ireland. So, has anyone been to Ireland here? No? A few people, okay. So anybody who's ever gonna travel there, you know, hit me up, you can stay in my parents, we have a farm down the bottom. You're all welcome, you know, big, big open green fields, you're all welcome to come and hang out. Anytime, anytime. So, as a young individual, I grew up on the farm, learning from my parents. My, my father was a farmer, learning that entrepreneurial spirit, and my mom was a teacher. And you know, I looked at them and I got inspiration from them to say that eventually I could become an entrepreneur, you know? And we had a lot of brothers and sisters, so you know, I decided to do something other than farming. So I hustled to save money, guys, and eventually I got a job with Apple. And uh, it took me a few times to get the job, but uh, eventually I got in there, I crushed it, and I began working as a business analyst in the European headquarters. So I started doing really well for myself, and then I migrated to the States, to Cupertino, California, and then I started working in the headquarters. I learned so much from Apple. Um, the year I arrived was the year actually that Steve Jobs passed away, so I had the, I had the privilege of of, of getting that aura from him and learning from him, you know? So, um, basically, I was learning so much, I decided, I looked at the industry as a whole, and I was like, what's going on right now? And what was big was e-commerce. So, um, I decided to take the risk, and guys, life is all about challenges, and about going after what you want, and you know, I took the experience, and I left on great terms, and I started figuring out what e-commerce was. So I went online and I met a guy called Lawrence Aponte. Anybody know who Lawrence Aponte is? Yeah. yeah. So Lawrence Aponte is one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet in your life. I can tell you right now, and anyone else can vouch me on that. So it was so funny, I was back in San Francisco, because I used to commute San Francisco to Silicon Valley, which is an hour and a half each way, and I called him up on the phone and I was like, Lawrence, I need to talk to you and I need to figure out what you're doing. You're selling all these products. So we got on the phone, we networked, and um, he said, look, we're gonna have a, an event in Phoenix. We should meet up. So I was like, no problem. In the meantime, I was networking with other people online. And guys, surround yourself with positive people. I can guarantee you guys, when you surround yourself with the people, that will, they, they'll be most influential in your life. So then, four days later after leaving, I flew to Bali, Indonesia. Never before traveled that far before, but I knew to kickstart my career as an entrepreneur and an e-commerce expert, I had to step outside my comfort zone. So there's a guy you're gonna hear from later on called Don Wilson. Don Wilson is the owner of Gearbubble. Gearbubble is an e-commerce platform and you know, I called Don up and I was like, I need, to, I need to mastermind with you guys. I gotta figure out how to get on your level. And he was like, well, Damien, you're very, 
You know, you're brand new. This is high level mastermind. And I said, Don, no, don't worry about it. I'm in. Let, let, let's sync up. Flew to Bali, came back with high energy, got on the call with Lawrence. It was Lawrence, let's do this, right? Let's do this. So we connected with Lawrence and I moved to Phoenix, right? So I moved to Phoenix and we established the Marketer's Mansion. Anybody been to the Marketer's Mansion before? Yeah. So the Marketer's Mansion, guys, is a place where anybody can come, network, collaborate, shoot video, we can test products, we can you know, mastermind, anything at all. We've had people from all over the world, Australia, United Kingdom, um, anywhere, right? Um, so we hold masterminds, we ship out inventory. You know, I'll talk about custom jewelry later on, where I do a lot of uh, in-house, okay? And the reason why I like masterminds, guys, this is actually a mastermind, because we are connecting with different type of skill levels. So Jeff might be a great salesman, you know, um, Uncle G below may be a good networker. Um, Ryan Gillette may know someone in Vegas that I can rent out a room to. You get the idea of what I'm trying to say? You gotta, when you're building an e-commerce business, you've gotta surround yourself with the components that make up a successful company, okay? So, uh, so next, we came to Techademics, I saw the vision, and I'll never forget it. Chris stood on stage, and he was going through this wonderful material. He said, guys, I want to challenge anyone in the audience right now to gamify life. And I was like, what the hell is gamifying life? Basically, it was to take your life up another level and go after something bigger and better to get that financial freedom, to get that, you know, so anyone can have choice, right? It's about having choices. It's about waking up, doing what you want, right? So I saw the vision, met Jim, met everyone, and we connected with all different people, right? So your network is your network, right? So then, guys, as you know, I've been very uh, integrated into the teachings of what's going on right now, the 90-day challenge. A lot of people here, new people, are already crushing it. The $100 day, or the $100 milestone, the $1,000 milestone, and 10,000. I can guarantee you guys, a lot of people are going to hit all three milestones. I can guarantee you right now, okay? But you've got to follow the steps, and you've got to be willing to put in the action, right? We have Chris Record, who is a high, high, high-end marketer, day in, day out, teaching you guys how to do this, right? So you gotta appreciate that, right? There's no, not many people do that, right? Okay, so moving on, and now this is where I'm gonna talk about the opportunity, guys. This is the opportunity, right? Global e-commerce sales will hit 1.9 trillion this year, right? By 2020, four trillion, right? Four trillion, guys. Every time I go on my Facebook, another retail store is shutting down. You know, people, people are getting laid off. Because you know why? Because we as individuals are selfish. We want things now. I want my Uber right now, I need to go. I want my Uber Eats, I want my Amazon Prime. You know, so we as individuals, uh, you know, we want it now. Back in the old days, it was like, oh, okay, I'll wait for a taxi. But guys, we're in a very, very lucrative market right now. And you guys have decided to take action and be part of that. And that's what, you know, that's what, that's what counts. Okay? So as I, as I talk through the presentation, I get into the six pillars, guys. I'm going to tell you how you can create that competitive advantage, right? What differentiates you from anyone else? What differentiates Uber over Lyft or vice versa, right? Everyone's got a unique, uh, a unique skill that they can implement, right? So guys, this, I'll never forget this picture. This was taken in, uh, at the event. Uh, I didn't really know what was going on. You know, I came in my shorts, and uh, McGregor was just after fighting, and I jumped on stage. So I believe that, you know, you've got you to document your journey and learn from what happened and what made you take a decision to where you are right now. So now, guys, we're going to go into the detail. We're going to go into the six pillars, and this is where it's going to get a lot of information overload. But don't worry, guys. We're going, to, we're going to circle back. We're going to regroup. You're probably tired from taking notes all throughout the week, right? Don't worry. I'm going to give you exactly the things that have made me grow so quickly. These are exactly the things, right? Because I believe in coming up and giving you value, right? I'm not going to give you high-end stuff. This is really detailed. This is going to be boom, 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 boom. Next. Right? This is, this, is de this is detail now, right? Six golden nuggets. Number one, guys, 
your mindset. Your mindset, right? Number two, I'm gonna talk about the principles of marketing. Number three, you have a great product, but you may have a poor Shopify store, right? We want the whole end-to-end -end life cycle of taking a customer from stopping in their tracks, seeing your image, to the thank you page. And that's a process, that's a structured process. Facebook ads, guys. A lot of you, I, I remember when I started looking at Facebook ads, I didn't really know what they were. They were complicated, they were stressful. I was getting mixed up, I was deleting. I was like, you know, but we're gonna make sure you guys can, can, can understand Facebook ads, right? Campaign, ad set, ad. That's it, guys, always. Campaign, ad set, ad, all right? I'm gonna talk about team. Remember, guys, it's not just you, it's not just you. We're building big brands here. We're building big businesses. So in order to um, maintain these, these brands so that you can sit down with your family or go and have a nice dinner while the revenue is continually coming in, right? Who's gonna, who, how are you going to manage that, right? Because it's going to happen really quickly. And if you're not ready, you know, things are going to be, you know, things are going to, it's, it's going to be difficult because you're going to have a thousand orders and then someone's calling you for, hey, it's, it's a communion or it's a christening or I got to go to church or I got to attend an event. How are you going to maintain your business, right? So first thing, guys, so powerful, your mindset, right? Your mindset. And when I, when I was in Apple, this is what I learned from Steve Jobs, right? He used to come by, and uh, his energy levels, I'm telling you guys, his energy levels is, is kind of what, 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 because I'm high energy, right? I'm high energy. If you, meet me, if you meet me outside here, I'm high energy, right? So here's things that I've done in order to really get my mindset right. I'm waking up early. I work out. I got to work out every day. I got to work out every day, because here's why. I go through the day. My mornings are very good. And next thing I'm like, oh, man, this is tough. This is tough, I wanna just get a nap. But you know what instead, guys? I'm off to the gym. I'm off to LA Fitness, right? I'm off to meeting people. I'm off to you know, knowing the people that I see at the gym. I'm collaborating, and I'm getting energy. I'm coming back, I'm having dinner. Next thing, all my workers are coming on at 5 p.m. because I'm a global company. I'm a global company, right? So all my workers, energy, 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 right? Take regular breaks, guys. Drink water, st step away from your desk, walk outside. Regular breaks, guys, be productive, okay? Create a notepad, you're all here, right? You're all here today, you're taking notepads, okay? But say, say you're just in bed, right, at nighttime, and next day an idea comes into your head, or you're, 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 in, a, you're in a taxi, or you're at an airport, and you see a t-shirt. Write that idea down. Write that idea down, guys. Because that, that idea will be gone 10 minutes later. So having a, even in your notes, in your phone, at the end of the week, you should have 20 different ideas for new product launches are 20 different ideas how you can take your business to the next level, okay? And like, like Jeff, like Jeff, I'm, I, I, I barely know Jeff, but I've already lear learned so much from him, you know? If you don't know who he is, Jeff Bacon, guys, right? Okay, guys, another thing, ask for mentors, right? Chris, Jim, you know, anyone here, right? There's some incredibly talented people here that I've met so far, right? All different, all different walks of life, right? If you, if, if you, if you get mentorship, just a, a small bit of advice on an ad copy, on a t-shirt, or, you know, as Matt was saying, as Matt was saying before, and Matt is actually one of the guys I met in Bali, it's kind of a small world, as you grow your businesses, you're gonna be knowing everyone. You're gonna know everyone as you grow your business. So Matt speaks about, you know, you know finding someone who knows something about nurses, okay? If you're in the dog niche, or if you're in the, you know, firefighter niche, go, f Go network with someone. Say, how would this design go? How does this ad copy look? Would a girl, would a, would a girl wear this? You know? So, okay, don't dwell on the past, guys. If you lose money on ads, don't worry about it. Shoot for the moon, guys. If you miss, you may, la you may land among the stars. That's very important, right? Okay, that's very important. Okay, and then run decisions, guys. If I do this, what happens? So what's the opportunity cost of me investing $200 on ads right now. What's the opportunity cost, okay? Okay, guys, that's just a, a, a picture for you guys. You can take it, you know, you can look at it, put it in your wall. You know, when I wake up, I'm looking at that. Okay, 
The principles of marketing, okay guys? Marketing is the identification and satisfaction of consumer needs and wants profitably, okay? The identification and satisfaction of consumer needs and wants profitably, okay? Profit, right? My favorite, guys, is the product. That's my favorite. That's my favorite product. That's my favorite part of, uh, of the marketing mix, right? Okay. Once your product is right, you can actually build everything else around your product. But if your product is bad, everything else is losing money. Everything else is losing money. If your product is good, we have a chance. If your product is good, we can we have a chance. You know, our ads are running at 50% of what they could be. Okay. Don't copy other people's products, guys. Don't be lazy. You know, unique products always win. You hear me that all the time when I was at the incubator. Unique products always win. Everyone in here is super smart. There's no reason why anyone can't come up with their own unique t-shirt idea, or own unique hoodie idea. Trust me, guys, I, post, I posted um, a t-shirt on um, the 90-day the, uh, challenge, which was, um, I'm trying to remember what it was. It was like, you look like I need a beer. That was it. You know, you look like I need a beer. Just text, simple font on a black t-shirt, and it's a winner. It's a winner, guys. It's easy work. Okay, so yeah, guys, it's imperative you, you know what your product is and who you're trying to target, because that's the product to customer match. Chris spoke about it. Matt spoke about it. Don Wilson's going to spoke about it. Um, you know, Tanner spoke about it, okay? Products that are standing for me right now, I'm going to tell you exactly. T-shirts, hoodies, shoes, socks, necklaces, hats, clocks, and AliExpress new products. AliExpress new products, something I haven't seen before. That's what I'm selling. I go to AliExpress, I type in new, and I go down through 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 pages of products until I find something that stands out to me and that elicits a, an emotional response or, or a product that, can, that I can say, wow, I could have that product up and running and selling in 20 minutes, because I could. And anyone here could as well, right? Spend time re researching products, guys. If you're not researching, get into a weekly cycle of Sunday, family time, Monday, where product research, we're, we're, we're organizing our team together and we're putting a plan into action that we're gonna boom. Tuesday as we're launching ads, Wednesday optimization, Thursday optimization, Thursday evening sales, Friday, more sales, Saturday, more, more sales, Sunday, cut, 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 winners, scale, 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 all right? So go on Facebook and find training products, guys. Find products, elicit response, as I said. Trade shows, guys, trade shows. As you, if you follow me, guys, on YouTube or Facebook, you know that me and Lawrence drove from Arizona to Las Vegas, and there was a lot of other people here today. I'm, I'm looking, they also went. And ASD Market Week is a place where you can go and find unique products, network with suppliers. All these suppliers spent ten, fifteen thousand dollars coming from China, coming from the Far East, to set up their stall to showcase their new products. And I found some crazy products there, guys. Crazy products. So if you're willing to put, you know, I, I invested maybe three hundred dollars on that trip, but I'm looking at the long term. I'm building relationships. So right now I have like 20, 20 suppliers on my WhatsApp. Boom. Can you find me this product? Boom, what's this product? Boom, what's the cheapest? So I made a connection with them and I told them I was serious. I told them I was serious so they know I'm a serious guy. So when I call them up, I need an answer right now. Okay, batch work guys, again, break your weekly targets down into launch all the products, put them onto the site, get your team going, boom, 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 boom. Next, launch all your ads, power editor, boom, 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 boom. Next, cut, 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 scale, scale, scale. Next, maybe is um, Facebook pages. Post all your new content. Have it scheduled. Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. MailChimp, right? Email marketing, guys. Email marketing. You sell into your same customers. Set up your email sequences, right? This is a lot of information. Right? I'm, going lock, I'm going quick because I'm giving you everything. This, this is a lot of information, right? And guys, number one, number one thing, designer. Your, your most, most important, if you're in print on demand, your most important employee is your designer, right? Your designer. And here's the thing, when you're working with your designer, guys, they are not internet marketers. So if you don't give them a briefing, a very detailed briefing, they're gonna, you're just gonna, it's not gonna work, guys, right? 
So don't ever ask a designer to design you something if you don't know what you want, right? You know, you can't just go to your designer and say, hey, I want a firefighter, a firefighter shirt. Because he doesn't know if it is it for women, is it for men, is it, you know, what's, what's the season, what's the color of the season. You've got to think of all these things, guys. Because no offense to the women here, but you, got, you know how to mix and match colors, right? Because you may not wear a particular color in the wintertime because that's not a seasonal color, right? So a lot of things, guys. So brief your, brief, and the more you brief your designer, the more quality artwork you will get back. And if you tell your designer, I need to design at 6 p.m. on Thursday, he'll deliver it. But if you don't give him any de deadline guy, he's going to go to someone else, right? That's just a little tip about, about designers, guys. They're very powerful, right? OK. Um, we're still on the first stage of, of the four Ps, right? Product. Now, guys, as we become experts, we're not just going to be looking for products on AliExpress, right? Because we want, we got to find unique products, right? Unique products. Remember, guys, one product can make a huge difference to your monthly sales. And uh, I can tell you guys, a lot of you know the feeling when a new product hits. It's a high energy feeling, right? Because you know, because it's boom, cha ching, cha ching, boom, boom. And that's when the rewarding part of being an entrepreneur is, is when you find the product and sales start coming in. That's the rewarding part. And that's the part that is difficult for people to get to because it's, it's, it's a lot of work, but when, when it happens, it, it, it's good, right? So guys, take note of them. You can take a screenshot of them. You can look at them later. That is through the Shopify app. The Shopify app, guys, right? Again, I don't believe in doing anything manual because I want to find the things that are the most value-adding activities that are going to grow and scale my business. So I don't want to be fulfilling manual orders when I can have a very, very detailed, good system um, to do it for me. And I actually met the guy who owns Shopify app, Chase. I met Chase in, in, in Hawaii on a mastermind, again, making that connection, building that rapport, so now he knows who I am. If I've got a problem, I'm calling Chase. OK, so guys, as you become more confident, you can create your own custom, you can create your own custom um, jewelry and products. You know, this is, this is one of my own products. Um, I saw a gap in the market. I listened to my customers. And a lot of you guys saw this at the, at the incubator and the few events I was at just demonstrating. Again, a simple design, guys, but I saw a customer request, and I had to figure out how I could get the product to him. So I got it. Um, so again, I designed it in Brazil, got a 3D design in Brazil, shipped it from China, came to my house in Phoenix, looked at it, tested it, ordered bulk, and then we just fulfilled in-house. Um, again, guys, this is down the line. This is when we are really confident as marketers, and we want to um, you know, meet and exceed customer needs and wants. Again, meet and exceed customer needs and wants profitably. Very, very powerful. Okay, pricing, guys. The second part of the marketing mix is price. Now, who told anyone to sell a shirt at $19.99? Who told someone to sell a shirt at $19.99? Who told someone a shirt was worth $29.99? We don't know. Why is a Mercedes worth more than a BMW? I, I don't know. But you've got to be willing to test pricing because you could be leaving a lot of money behind you if you are not at the price point that your customer is level with you at, right? So don't be afraid, guys. Test a t-shirt, $21.99, slowly creep it up, $22.99, $23.99. My favorite is $24.95. That's what I sell my shirts at, $24.95, $4.99 shipping. So consciously, it's under the $30, $24.95 plus $4.99, it's under the $30. Again, more consumer psychology going on there. Um, so price, your price is going to determine your profit margin. Know your magic metric. Your magic metric, guys, is how much are you willing to pay for every purchase conversion. So your metric is how much are you willing to pay to get a sale, right? Okay? And shipping, guys, big mistake a lot of people make. If you have a lot of add to carts and no purchases, there's probably something wrong with your shipping, right? Shipping is a complicated enough... Um, is a complicated enough thing to master. 
And even to this day, that, you know, I get a lot of complaints about my shipping. So everyone's different, guys, and you gotta, you gotta really split test it, you know? And uh, shipping, some people don't charge shipping at all, you know? So I'm a firm believer in that if a customer is willing to add the product to the cart, they already want the product, but they may not willing to pay the, the additional amount you're charging them. So be very careful with that, okay? Because a slight adjustment on your, on your shipping will lead to an increased conversion rate, 100%. Okay? Um, so, so far, guys, um, is this a lot of, everyone following so far what we're doing? Okay. Okay. So now, guys, we're on product. We have our product created. We're, we've priced it. And now we're figuring out what do we do? What do we do with the product, right? The place, the place, okay? So guys, I run my ads on, I, I run my advertising on Facebook, okay? And I, ru I run news feed only. Does everyone know how to run news feed ads? Yeah? So there's automatic, and then you can edit, you can edit, right? Does it, so automatic, basically, you're telling Facebook, go and find me, we don't care where you put it, right side, desktop, Instagram, audience network, we don't care where you put the product. Me, guys, I've tested it. Newsfeed mobile, newsfeed desktop, convert the highest, they give you the best bang for your buck. They put it in a nice little 1200 by 1200 or whatever you set the ad up on, okay? That's just me, guys, personally. Um, just a little tip for you guys. And again, guys, mobile, I'll talk later about the Shopify store. If you haven't tested how your store looks on mobile, you need to test it, guys. A lot of themes do not look good on mobile. If it doesn't look good on mobile, people are gonna be confused, too many pop-ups. It's gonna be a nightmare. It's gonna be a nightmare, guys. That's why I picked a theme. Like, I didn't even look at it on desktop. I got my theme, I, and I opened up my iPhone 6, and I was like, wow, that's what I want. So the theme I run, guys, is called Minimal. It's a free theme, Minimal. And you don't need paid themes unless you're really, really going after branding. You know, I'm, I'm just at the initial stages right now. But guys, the theme doesn't matter. What matters is that the product is right, the price is right, and you land in a store, you say, yes, I can trust Damien, or I can trust this brand. Okay, guys, again, uh, for anyone testing fashion, uh, yeah, Instagram is great for fashion. Instagram influencers, um, but some products do not sell on Instagram, so just be careful with that, you know. Um, again, guys, um, as we get more experience, Google Shopping, SEO, as Kenny Klein was saying, Kenny Klein is a master SEO. So guys, these are all avenues we can explore eventually, but right now, guys, I want you learning Facebook ads, I want you putting money into $5 ads and looking at the data. Don't just run an ad, oh, it's spent $20, shut it off and not look at the data. At least figure out what was the audience, was it male or female, you know, even what part of America were these people coming from, you know, what part of the world, you know, what was the cost per click, what was the ad type, write it down in your journal, guys, and then come back and say, I tried this before, now I'm gonna try something else. You get me, guys? It's about learning, it's about building the pixel, it's about becoming masters in driving traffic because when you drive traffic, you can apply it to any industry, internet marketing, affiliate marketing, when you, social media, you can, you can write, I can walk down the street right now and I can walk into the local Jamba Juice and say, hey guys, I'm gonna run your traffic for you. You get me? So that's key. Okay, promotion guys. Again, um, this is all about, you know, email marketing, SEO, you know, like anybody, anybody not doing uh, email marketing right now? So, yeah, so we're, we'll, email marketing is so powerful, right? Email marketing, right? And it, here's why. Because as more people sign up to your store, they're gonna be on your email list, right? And you're gonna build a story about you. You're gonna build a story about who you are. So say you sell kitchen appliances. You know, this is where I'm from, this is who I am, this is my vision, this is the customer service I wanna give to you. And then over time, you're building that loyalty. So every time, it's coming into your inbox, and eventually it's like, hey, Susan, you know, um, thank you so much for being a loyal um, subscriber. I've got this special offer just for you, for 24 hours only, and it's like a 9.99 wooden spoon or something, right? Boom, 
you have a subscriber that is now a purchaser, right? And over time, you're gonna build that email list, right? You're gonna build that email list, and you're gonna be able to resell, them, resell to them, okay? So my goal is to have one third of my revenue um, coming from email marketing. And we'll talk about that later on, guys. But, um, so promotion, guys. Monday, as I was talking about email marketing, I'm telling a story. So on Monday, I'm coming in, say I'm in the beer niche. I'm like, hey, I was in, I was in Chicago, I had some beers with some friends, at Uncle G below. So I was in Chicago having beers. You know, I came across this beer. It's like a, a Guinness light or something. You're basically telling your, your email list about a story, right? And eventually they're like, oh, this Damien guy is pretty cool. You know, let me see exactly what he sells, right? So Wednesday then is like you're, you're offering your subscribers who have not purchased something a unique product. Then Friday is the full email blast. Friday is my money day. I'm coming in and I'm saying, hey guys, buy from me. Last night was payday, give me your money. <laughs> so the less we spend on advertising, guys, the cheaper our cost per purchase, right? Okay? And the next, last thing, guys, on promotion, right? It's all avenues. We want to cover all avenues, right? So guys, if you have a Facebook fan page, which you should, you should be using the, the shop now button the little, the little carousel button that appears just underneath your cover photo, right guys? So because what's gonna happen is as your, as, your, as your fan page grows, people are just gonna be tagged and liked. They're gonna come in, they're gonna like, oh wow, this is a I love beer store, and they're gonna see the shop now, right? That shop now, guys, my current stats, about 2% about is coming from the shop now button. So it's a simple, it's a simple uh, addition, guys. Go onto your Facebook fan page, click the, um, I think it's like the, uh, action, it's an action button. You can learn more, you can uh, uh, shop now. Put in your URL. So if you have a fan page specific to beer and you have a generic store, you're putting in the URL that takes them to the collection page of the beer. You get me? The collection page of the beer for that unique fan page, right? Okay, so again guys, let's summarize the four P's, product, price, place, promotion. They all gotta complement each other. They've all gotta work in tandem. Uh, and when you master them, guys, your business, your business w will grow a lot faster, right? But you've got to pay, pay attention to one because if the product is wrong but the pricing is right, you have an issue with your product, you've got to switch up your products. If your product is great but if you're too high in pricing and your competition's eating you, you've got to adjust your pricing, right? Your promotion may suck. You may be on Instagram where your following is, is women 65 plus who are not on Instagram, they're on Facebook, and they're new people, they need to be educated, and they need to be taught on how you actually make that purchase. So guys, powerful stuff, exciting stuff, something that you should be super excited to get going and figuring out how you get your marketing mix going. Right guys, the third, or the, the second pillar, I think it is, uh, yeah, the second pillar is a Shopify store, right guys? So you've put all this time into investing in the product, finding the product, you know, going above and beyond, perfecting that with your designer, saying, hey, you know, I think you could do better on the design. You have your product, and someone clicks on the link, they go to your Shopify store, and next thing it's like, my expectations have just gone down the drain. This is a poorly way, laid out website. You know, like, the, the contact us is at gmail.com, you know. The logo is, like, put together by a six-year-old. You know, so little, little, little things, guys, is gonna make a huge difference to your, to your um, Shopify store. Now, guys, the biggest impact to my store, right, are, are the following um, key points. And I'm gonna go into the key points, guys, but let me just summarize, right? I'm gonna tell you exactly the Shopify stores I use, and a lot of my, sh or, sorry, the, the Shopify apps I use, a lot of the Shopify apps I use are free, right? So, guys, don't feel the need to buy into expensive apps, right guys? Remember, it's a journey. I want you to perfect mainly free stuff, right? As we become more confident, we, then we can start you know, diving into more uh, paid themes. Great logo, guys. About Us, if you don't have an About Us page, you're su you'd be surprised, guys. A lot of people go straight for the About Us, right? They wanna know, who the hell is Damien's store, right? So they gotta go in, you know, and I have, you know, I have About Me, I have my picture, I'm like, Here's what I resonate with. Here's the reason why I set up this business. Here's my vision for the business. Here's what I'm gonna deliver to you. Here's what I expect from you, 
and I'm setting the stage from day one. I'm building that trust, know, like, and trust. Remember Chris always talks about that? People need to know you, they need to like you, and they need to trust you, all right? FAQ, tracking, customer reviews. So guys, remember it's about leveraging different parts of your business. So if I have customers who have bought from me and that have given me feedback that they love the product, I'm going to use that as social proof on my page. All right? Again, guys, collections to products. I like, I like having collections and then all my products underneath my collection because I may want to send people to a collection of items. So having that URL ready, so guys, when, when you set up your store, and you have a collection of like say gym clothing the url the url is the link guys is the website link is going to be forward slash so it's going to be damien store forward slash gym that's the collection then forward slash product is when we drill down on the collection and then forward slash you know um wrist straps that's how the flow of shopify works all right so easy laid out website i gave you my theme guys I love it, it's a nice white background. Avoid distractions, too many pop-ups, guys. Too many people, people, people we're, it's already information overload. You know, every time you're on a blog, pop-up, guys. Very irritating from my point of view, I don't like pop-ups. At least I wanna get the, the person in on the fu sales funnel. That's my primary goal. But distracting people, guys, you know, people are outside having a, having a break, they're, st they're in Starbucks, they're out strolling their feet and they go to my website and it's like, Oh my God, another pop up. Get off, get off my screen. You know, you get me? Okay. Keep sale items at a minimum. Not every product on your page should be like 50% off because you're tarnishing your brand. People are like, oh, well, this guy has automatically priced his products up anyway. I know his story. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't, it's not my first rodeo, you know? So, guys, keep your sale items at a minimum. Split test your pricing. We spoke about that and make sure your add to cart and buy button are highlighted and large. That's number one thing, guys, that I would change if it's not right now. The text on your buy button and add to cart need to be big, and the, the actual color of those buttons needs to pop. So when I say pop, uh, if, you're, if, you're, if your theme is white, I'm putting it green or red. I've split tested both. Red is good, green is good, Go with whichever one you want. Red seems pretty good right now. I use green. But guys, I just want it to pop because when a customer's looking at the page, I want them to focus on that add to cart or that buy, that purchase button, right? Okay, so here are my top apps. I'm gonna run down through them. I'm gonna tell you what they are. You can, you can take a photo of them or else you can look them up and you can see whether or not is it a good fit for you, etc. And to, hey, uh, Peter, can you make sure that the, the front screen is, is off screensaver? So are the team backstage? Because um, it's, it's not showing up, it's, it's on screensaver. So guys, free shipping bar. Why do I love free shipping? Here's why. I want to get my average order value up. The two most important metrics in e-commerce are average order value and lifetime customer value. When you know what your customer is worth to you, then you can decide budget-wise how to play it, right? Super, super powerful. Average order value, how much is each customer worth to you, or how much was that customer that bought from you, what was the purchase conversion, right? Okay, free shipping bar. So what I do is, anybody that buys a collection of products, or one product, over $75, I'm shipping it free. Because I know, I know that the ROAS, R-O-A-S, the return on ad spend is at a level where I'm profitable. Because if someone's spending 75 and, my, and my, my cost per purchase is 15, 20 bucks, I'm at a profit, guys. So I'm pushing for free shipping all the time, all the time. And then, I'm, guys, you can go worldwide. You can go worldwide, but don't go worldwide unless you perfect the art of USA first. That's my recommendation. Abandonment car protector, guys, crucial, crucial, crucial. This is like what I call the sweeping brush. The abandonment car protector is my sweeping brush. I'm sweeping up all these people that went to my site, abandoned the, the cart, 
and I'm just coming in and I'm, uh, and I'm, I'm saying, hey guys, you know, um, did life get in the way? That's actually one of my, one of my, um, one of my email titles. Did life get in the way? People are like, what do you mean, did life get in the way? So then my, my follow-up is like, hey, we noticed you were interested in this product, but we understand you were busy. Hey, we still have your product on the shelf. We can ship it within 24 hours if you wish. If there's anything else, if there was anything else that, was, that you had difficulty with our site, please let us know. Buy now, pitch your product. Super, super powerful, guys, super powerful. Thank you. Okay, so um, print on demand, guys. Anyone who says the print on demand industry is saturated, no. How many people are wearing t-shirts today, you know? I mean, it's not, guys, you know? And that's, that's a testament to everyone, like Thomas Bell, you know, um, Don Wilson, getting in on the, on the, on the, on the, on the, on the print on the man industry, right? Custom Cat, T-Launch, Virusol. These are all, these are all apps I use, guys, right? And the reason why I like them, guys, is because it's going back to what I said earlier about unique products win. Every print on the man company may have a new product that another company does not have. So you've got to be in touch. You've got to be figuring out. I gave you guys a tip two weeks ago about if you follow me on Snapchat, uh, those be beer to their beer um, beer sleeves. They fit on your can. They fit on your bottle. I mean, they're, they're a winner, but only one company had them. So you've got to be able to adapt. You've got to be able to, as again, guys, I mentioned earlier, batch job your, batch job your work. So I can call up my project manager, and we'll go into team building later. I can, talk, I can call up my project manager right now and say, hey, I need you to uh, launch these 20 different designs on this beer product. And I've already trained them on how you do that. So it's going to be executed, you know? Um, so quickly, guys. Um, uh, re retarget app, again, you can, re you can use retarget app or you can use Facebook DPAs. Uh, basically, it's like a slideshow where you're, where you're showing people different products that they uh, actually came to your site and actually viewed, okay? Looks, man, looks, okay. I wish I, I, wish I owned looks. Um, looks is a customer review app. And why I love looks is because Looks allows me to showcase products that someone else has bought to existing customers. So say you have a lovely t-shirt and you sell that t-shirt to someone in Mississippi, all right? Four weeks after you ship the product, or two weeks, you can, you can adjust. A few, a few weeks after you ship the product to them, you can send them an email. Hey, we hope you got your t-shirt. Hey, you know what would be great? If you could send us a photo of you wearing it. We would be so proud. It helps us as a, as a business. It helps our customers, you know? And if you really love it, hey, you send us a photo, we send you 50% coupon off. So you're giving them a 50% coupon. You've created it in Shopify. You've tracked it, like you've named it um, customer review, right? Customer review. That way then, every time someone sends you a product back and they use the coupon, you can track how many purchases came off the photo review. Does everyone understand me that? Does everyone know how you create discount codes? Okay, so discount codes are very, are very, are very important, and you guys should have an Excel file where all, you know free shipping, uh, you know um, bad review, you know you, you can create discount codes like Valentine's Day, so you can track what's working best for you guys. Okay, uh, auto currency switcher. When you when you go worldwide, you will wanna uh, you will wanna take the time out to really, really go above and beyond in delivering to your customers. And one of the things they will look for is like, we know you're a USA website, but at least give us the currency in my native country. So if I'm in UK and I'm shopping in London, I don't want to be looking at dollar. I want to be looking at British pounds. If I'm in, if I'm in Ireland, I want to be looking at Euro. Okay, guys, super powerful. You're, again, guys, you, you're separating yourself from the competition you are coming in at different angles. You're becoming a global company. You're becoming a brand. You're growing your company. And guys, I'm telling you, it, it, it's a journey, but we're going to get you through it, right? Uh, again, guys, some more Google Shopping. As we, as, we, as we grow, we're going to start pushing our product on other platforms, right? Because here's the thing, guys. Facebook changes, 
right? Facebook changes a lot, right? It, it, it adjusts its platform because, you know, it, it, it's a superpower. They want to engage. They want to figure out what's going on, right? So they make these changes. So a lot of you guys know about the affinity change, yeah. where, you know, affinity, you know, before we could go in and see and find high affinity interest groups. Now that now they've taken that away, okay? But you know, guys, as you all know, my number one technique when it comes to running Facebook ads is flex targeting. My number one, I preach it all the time, flex targeting, also known as intersecting audiences, because I believe that flex targeting is if equal, if not better, than high affinity, because here's why. Picture, and I'm getting a bit sidetracked right now, but I need to explain this. So flex targeting, um, I might draw it out later, but flex targeting, guys, basically, we're in the beer niche, all right? Picture three circles. First circle, people who love generic term beer, all right? So draw that circle, beer, right? And then, hey, guys, the screen is off again, but nonetheless, let's continue. Um, so first circle is beer. The second circle is people who live in Austin, or no, people who live in Texas, right? So now you have a beer intersected with people who live in Austin, right, or Texas. The next one is people who are married. So listen carefully now. We have taken an industry of beer people that is probably like 250 million worldwide, and we have flex targeted we have flex targeted down into an audience of two million because what we've done is we've created the three circles, right guys? We have the three circles written down right now. Beer, then we have, okay. Thank you guys, the entrepreneurs guys. I mean, these guys, these guys are absolutely incredible. They're on, they're on the groups, they're learning, they've, t they've, made, a, they've made a commitment to um, learn from, from experts. And uh, these, these really are giving so much value to you guys. Okay, beer, um, Texas, and married. Now guys, now the reason why I love this is because the audience is too big for me. Beer is too big for me, right? It's, it's like a, I don't know, 250 million, right? Whatever, okay? No. I want the customer to stop in their tracks. When they're scrolling Facebook, I want, that's my first objective. I want the customer to say, whoa, whoa, oh my God, what is that, right? So I'm able to flex target people who love beer and people who are married and people who live in Texas. So then I can create a t-shirt that says, um, I'm the unfortunate Texan married man who can't get a beer. You get me? And this is my audience. Now, isn't that powerful, guys? That's how you do it. That's the number one thing that has contributed to me growing to that number because I identified how to do flex targeting. Okay, guys. Um, okay, we're back. So. Um, how are we doing for time? Anybody, any, how, how far through the presentation am I, guys? Anybody know? We started it? Okay. Because I, I get sidetracked, I'll talk. Yeah. Okay. Okay, guys. More. <laughs> okay, guys. So, so for email marketing, guys, I'm using MailChimp. MailChimp is user friendly. You can use whatever you want, guys. Rare, you can use all other types of email, but specifically I'm using MailChimp because it's worked best for me. I can create a lot of different alternatives and it's probably mainly used among e-commerce uh, internet marketers. Uh, SalesPop. SalesPop is just a simple app that tells you, you know, other people that have bought a particular product on your site. It's gonna pop up on the left-hand side. Just be careful with it. Um, you know, see how it looks on mobile. Uh, you, don't wanna, you don't wanna come up too often because people are like, Oh my God, that's the same cat shirt that someone bought in, in Louisiana or whatever. So just be careful with that. But it is powerful. It is super powerful, guys. Sa sales pop. Trust me in that one. Social sharing. Okay, guys, here's the thing. Remember I talk about the less you've got to pay for ads, the better for you. So when you use the social sharing button app, 
it encourages people to share a product from your page or share you know, to Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, etc., etc. All right, guys? So I would encourage you guys to install so social sharing. Remember, guys, the engagement, the algorithm, the brand. We, you know, we can't just put all the responsibility on Facebook to give us conversions. We at least have to put in the work ourselves. All right, guys? Um, another one, tractor, guys. A lot of people, you know, and I'm going to go into this later, I want to reduce the number of emails that are coming in to me asking stupid questions. So Tractor is an app whereby, so everyone knows that when we ship a product, we're given either, we're given the order number and we're given the tracking number. So Tractor allows someone to come into your site and they'll have the email co order confirmation. They'll be able to put in the product, in the unique identifier into the, into the, into the, um, the tractor app, and then boom, they know exactly where your product is. Super powerful, guys. It shows, it shows again, guys, it shows building that know, like, and trust factor. And guys, I, I recommend you guys getting some sort of, there's loads of them out there. You don't have to go with tractor. I'm not affiliated with any of these, but I'm telling you exactly what is on my site. I'm telling you exactly what's on my site. Okay. So next one is Wheelio, guys. Um, I've experimented with Wheelio. Wheelio is just another app um, that basically, if you exit the store, it's going to pop up a little wheel that you can spin and potentially work, win different types of, of uh, discount codes. I like it. It's been working for me a lot, guys. Um, I experiment with that and MailMunch. MailMunch is the integration with MailChimp, MailMunch just is another pop-up on, on your screen. Again, guys, pop-ups, just be careful with them. But uh, Wheelio has been working for me lately. And again, guys, it's a, it's, a, it's a unique item because here's why. Someone goes to your store, they don't agree with the pricing. They're like, oh, I love the product, but they made, you made an error on the pricing. And it's like, oh, exit. As soon as, you go, as soon as you exit the screen, like exit the browser, it's like, wait, you've unlocked, you've unlocked. Um, a spin the wheel. I don't know exactly what I've called it, but you've unlocked a special spin the wheel into your email for a chance to win one of the seven different segments. So the first is 15% off, the second is 5% off, the second is n n no win, the third is free shipping. So what, what's happening is, guys, people love, people love, um, ex it's, it's exciting, right? You put in your email list, you may get 20% off, you may get 15% off, right? And guys, I've seen a lot of people, they spin the wheel and it's like five or 10%, they, they take it because five, five or 10% of, of, of say 60 bucks is still like, you know, it's, it's saving money and people want to save money, right? So try it guys. Plug in SEO, um, again, more detail, but I'm using it to get my, um, my, my store optimized uh, and showing on Google. Google, I'm basically spreading that, um, um, that uh, organic and you know, just put, put it, putting, my pro, putting my store out there, right? Making sure it's ranking. And I'm actually hiring someone really to, to fix any SEO errors right now because I think there may be some alt text problems and stuff on the images. So they're gonna fix that up. Boost Sales app, another upsell app that you can say. So say someone adds a hoodie to the add to cart, then you can upsell them and say, hey, you know, 80% of people that bought this hoodie also bought, you know, a hat or a t-shirt, right? And then you give them some sort of discount. Again, guys, you're, it's the average order value you're trying to get up. And that's the reason we have apps like this because we, we're encouraging people to add a second item to the, che to, the, to the checkout because it's gonna allow us to pay more for that particular conversion. All right, guys. Um, great logo. So, so I'm just gonna highlight a lot of the things that I just said in the introductory part. The logo, guys, gotta, gotta be good logo. Simple, memorable, timeless, versatile, appropriate. You know, we all know the Tommy Hilfiger logo, wet and right, wet, white and red, very simple. You know, guys, a simple logo is probably what you should do, guys. And, um, you know, make sure it's appropriate. If you own, if you own like a, a yoga store, make sure the logo actually aligns with the customer value or the customer expectation of what the store is meant to represent. Okay, guys? Versatile, if you're running a general store, make sure the, the logo is, is applicable to all different types of niches that you may be running on the store. Okay, again guys, remember, you, you know, I'm trying, to reduce, I'm trying to reduce my costs here, right? So you, you can just create it on Canva. 
You don't need a designer to do it. You see Chris, you saw Chris in the groups creating his own logos, right? So guys, you know, you're saving money, okay? But if, you're wanna, if you wanna pay for an additional one, yeah, you can go on Upwork or somewhere just to pay for a really high-end quality one, you know? Okay, again, guys, uh, going back to the about us, who are you, what are you, where are you, uh, why is it that differentiates you from someone else, right? And again, I add a picture of myself on the page. I, I know it sounds weird, adding a picture of me on the website, but again, guys, I want people to know me, like me, and trust me so that when they see me on my website and I send them an email, it's like, okay, that's the crazy Irish guy. Now I got it, you know? Okay, contact us, guys. Simple, okay, guys? Invest in a email that aligns with your store's name, okay, guys? So support at damianstore.com. Um, pretty basic. Um, a lot of people actually don't have contact us on their page, and that's a big no-no, right, guys? You want someone to be able to get in touch with you, who knows, maybe they're looking to do some sort of deal with you. Maybe they wanna sell your product in bulk or something. So you've gotta be willing to ha have that um, available, you know? And another tip I use is I use the Messenger chat, Messenger chat app, guys, and I have one dedicated person that was responsible, and I'll show you the team structure later. That person is responsible for the social and customer uh, engagement. She's responsible for Messenger chat, because guys, the messenger chat is just so fast and easy, right? So instead of emailing it, finding the email, boom, chat. Hey, you know, I saw your product, but I'm having difficulty checking out. Do you not ship to United Kingdom or do you not ship to Netherlands? So the messenger app is powerful, guys, right? Very, very powerful. Okay, uh, Shopify layout, guys. Again, my goal is to bring the customer from the product page to the thank you page in the most efficient manner possible, all right? Uh, again, we talked about the add to cart and purchase, bur purchase buttons. Um, guys, don't be sloppy on your product listing. So here's what I mean. So um, when you're importing your products from AliExpress, a lot of people will have the same standard description. So, you know, um, you know um, nine millimeter, you know, um, stainless steel, um, you know, exclusive limited offer. Guys, spend time being creative, right? Don't be lazy. Come up, with a, come up with a nice description on why you're selling the product. Why does it resonate with the customer? What, why is your product different from anyone else, right? Okay, so when you have that detailed description, people are gonna read it, they're gonna read it. And then guys, you can start adding hyperlinks. So a hyperlink is basically, so people are reading the description and they're like, oh, cool product, but it's not the time of season for a t-shirt. I wish they had a hoodie. So at the bottom of the product description, I'm putting a hyperlink. I'm saying, hey, not, um, not interested in a t-shirt? Hey, click the link to get the hoodie, the equivalent hoodie. So then I have the hyperlink, boom, it's gonna go back to the hoodie listing, boom, the person checks out the product. So guys, spend, spend, spend a bit of time with your product listings. I know it's, it's difficult, you know, it's time consuming, but it's gonna be worth it, guys. It's gonna be worth it, right? Um, Track order page, uh, so that we, we spoke about that social media links, etc. right? The Shopify layout, goes, put some time into it, right guys? And uh, make sure it flows properly. Product page, uh, again, scarcity, trust factors, right guys? A lot of our purchases are gonna be impulse buys, right? A lot of our purchases are gonna be impulse buys. So uh, when, the pro when, the person go when the person goes to your store, you know, tell them why they need to buy now, right? If you don't tell them why they need to buy now, they're gonna be like, oh yeah, I'll just come back to this later. Uh, you know, I don't remember the name, but in fact, guys, they've already been hit by 20 or 30 different ads in the meantime. And they're like, oh, what was the name of that store? I can't really remember what it was. So guys, we gotta get them checked out once they land, right? You know, you can put something like, um, hey, we, we sold over 200 of this item. Uh, we don't know when we're gonna get the rest. There's now 12 left. Or say, hey, um, you know, this is a limited time offer. It's ending on Saturday. Get yours now or lose it forever. It's just, it's just consumer mentality, the subconscious mind getting into the buying, buying behavior of someone, okay? All right, mobile desk comp compatible. We spoke about that. Make sure it looks good on mobile. FAQ, here's, here's a key, here's a key, right. I'm actually, I'm building an FAQ right now. Um, I think it's like about four pages long, but right now on my store, I have every single email 
or sorry, of every single response that you can have available for my VA to copy the FAQ and just post it into the messenger chat or post it into an email. So typical questions are, where are you based? Are your products animal friendly? Um, how long does it get? How long does it take to get to, to, to me? Uh, where can I track my order? Um, how long have you been in existence? What's your return policy? What's your terms of service? Um, you know, what's your privacy? You know, all, all these. Different, where's my information going? One simple document with a, with a, with a link is going to solve all your customer service problems, right? Because you don't want to be spending time answering 20 to 30 to 40 emails. It's going to frustrate you guys. And it's going to frustrate your VA, right? Your VA is supposed to like add value to your business. So spot trends, spots pe spot people on your, on your ad copy saying, hey, I wish they had this in a different color. Or hey, they only sell pit bulls. Damn, I wish they sell Maltese. You get me, guys? Your VA needs to give you some value. Right, your VA needs to give you some value. And that's why I'm teaching all my VAs and people to take it to the next level because I want to reward my employees for the work they do. I can't increase their pay unless they're going to give me something. And that's the culture and the fun that I have in my business because I'm saying, if you give me some value, I'm giving you a raise. And I'm happy that's what I want to do because the more they give value to me, the more, the more it's going to turn into a long-term brand for me. Okay, guys? Okay, so like little tips like, like what I've just described has really scaled the business, right? So I talked about customer loyalty and maintaining that, um, that relationship with the customer so they buy again. Like one day, one day I was at the gym and... Um, one day I was at the gym and uh, this order came through and I was like, what's going on here? And um, it was an order for over 2.2, so $2,200 for one order. And I was, like, I was like, what's going on here? I thought it was like a fraud. So I picked up the phone and I called him and I said, hey, this is Damien Cockton here. He says, I, we, I just saw you place an order. Um, I'm very happy. I'm excited. Can you tell me a bit more about your order and why you placed it? And she told me. So, and she, she also said, hey, by the way, thank you so much for the discount. So what I gave her was, I gave her a discount uh, of $465. You see that? So, so the total was actually 1863 That's one order, right? And then, guys, as I mentioned before, and as Chris mentioned, you know, it's about finding those winners that you can duplicate our, our growing bill. So this was, a, this was my, one of my biggest days uh, last, it was actually t two weeks ago. 8.7K. 8, 8. So that was just one day. So um, again, guys, this is not to brag or anything, but this is about why you need to focus on treating your business like a business and setting goals for yourself that you're going to build a customer relationship. You're going to go for a dollar over a dollar per visitor because that's the metric we got to aim for, guys, is a dollar per visitor. If you can get a dollar per visitor, uh, you're doing very well. You're doing very well. And, you know, like through the quarter right now, or, or sorry, through the month, we're at 77K. And uh, we're just, you know, the last few days I've been so busy. And again, guys, you're going to come across it. My ads tanked, number one. Um, the Facebook made an update. They made an update to their systems. And number two, I was just traveling and my ads were affected. And now I got to relaunch all my ads and then I'm preparing for this. So as an entrepreneur, guys, we gotta, we got to adapt. And I'm not worried about it. I'm just worried about um, you know, getting it back on track, you know, getting it back on track. Because e-commerce, guys, is up and down. Some days you're going to be high in emotion. Next day it's going to be like, I spent $20. And it's because, you know, as well, guys, it was holiday. It was a holiday. People were traveling. People were spending money on, on, on getting away. And they, they weren't worried about Facebook. It was about family time with their kids. So it was about spending money on good dinner. It was about spending money on traveling. They didn't want to be bomb bombarded with, 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 with ads, right? So these things will play a part in your, in your revenue, right? So guys, don't stress about it. Just keep moving forward, all right? Okay, so now we're on to the next pillar, which is advertising, brand awareness, putting your product out there. And uh, we're going to talk about, first of all, guys, 
These are all the different ways that you as a business owner can showcase your product, right? Facebook ads, we all know Facebook ads, that's the number one method I use. The Facebook fan page, a lot of people don't utilize their Facebook fan page. My fan page is growing 6,000 6, people per week. 6,000 people per week. And the reason why it's growing that is because I have a person, as I said earlier, dedicated to content creation, interaction with the customer, posting high quality video, posting high quality images, and I know that that person is worth X amount to the business. So I have to dedicate a certain amount of cost to the individual. And every day I'm like, wow, you gave me 6,000 customers to my fan page? Here's a bonus. Next week I'm going to automate a lot of the work that you did for me. Stay at it. Instagram influencers, guys, powerful, but it's like that, right? It's like that. So with Facebook ads, it's not bad, but with Instagram influencers, it's difficult because the, and it, but okay, so an Instagram influencer, guys, is someone who has a large following in a niche or in a, in a space that you want to be in. So for example, you know, um, I had a girl in LA, um, I actually flew to LA and I met her, and I literally, I gave her the product, and she took a picture with it, she posted it, she posted it to her following, I think she had like 55,000 followers, I gave her the money and that was it. But then as I flew back home, um, I started getting sales. So I sent her another product, I shipped her another product, and then I got no sales. So, and the reason why is because I had looked back over her pictures on her Instagram and she was promoting all different types of products. So again guys, it's good, it works, it's popular, but it's gonna give you uh, different, different kind of results. It's not as flexible as Facebook ads, and that's why I look at Facebook ads as the number one skill you gotta master if you wanna build, grow, and scale your business. All right? It's exciting. I can tell you right now, six months, guys, I, not, I didn't have a clue. I didn't have a clue of Facebook ads. It wasn't refreshing. I was shutting off ads. I didn't know what was going on. I'm gonna take you through the ads later and what the columns you need to look at, but I was frustrated. We were at the marketer's mansion. I was like, this is stupid. It's too complicated. It's too complicated, I'm giving up. But, and if anyone here from the house, they know what happened. What happened was, I worked straight through the night. I started at like 10 p.m. I worked straight through till, till the following morning at 6, 6 a.m. And Lawrence, Ruslan, Aaron, Danielle, came down the stairs, and they were like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh yeah, I just decided to just launch like $55 ads. They're like, oh, yeah, you need to go to sleep, man, you look a wreck. So I, w I went to sleep, guys, and I came back, and things started, go things started clicking. I was like, wow, I simplified it, because what I did was news feed, news feed only, $5 ads, flex targeting. And I was like, whoa. Okay, okay. So then I just started duplicating the ads. And then every so often I shut off a bad performing ad and I duplicate again, duplicate, and I continue to. So guys, when you're doing flex targeting, when you wanna expand your audience, cause you're gonna run out, you're gonna, you're, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna get rid of, uh, you're gonna eat into your audience size over time. Cause not everyone in your pool size is gonna buy from you. So you're gonna slowly eat into the actual audience size. So what happens is, guys, here's what I'm gonna do. I duplicate the ad set, and I remove, I remove Texas, right? I duplicate the ad set, and I remove Texas. That now leaves me with a new ad set that is targeting only people who love beer and people who are married. That all of a sudden gives me more scope to go and scale as much as I want, all right? So that's why I like flex targeting, is because I'm getting the most passionate audiences, I'm getting the most passionate audiences that are likely to buy from me, okay? So Google Shopping, with Twitter, these are all other avenues, guys, uh, that you can use, point of sale. Does anyone know what point of sale is? So point of sale is basically, 
Uh, and you can do this, you know, say you're, say you're selling kitchen appliances, right? And you're like at a cooking seminar, or you're at a cooking show. You can get out the point of sale, right? On your, on your, on your Shopify, right? And you, you can actually sell in person, right? You can sell in person, right? And that's, it's a bit advanced, guys. I'm not, I'm not doing it, but I'm just telling you, it's an avenue for any of you guys that are involved in clubs, or involved in weekly meetups, or you may find that there's potential to sell to a, a variety of people at some event. So look into guys, point of sale, and uh, yeah. Reddit, guys, Reddit is like a viral, a viral place where people will, will, will just showcase your products, free traffic. Pinterest, YouTube, YouTube guys, YouTube, you, YouTube is powerful too. Um, you can send your product to someone who's got a big YouTube following and say, hey, you know, I'll give you this product for free if you do a YouTube video for me, right? So you ship them the product, they do a nice um, review, you're giving them a product, they're building their audience, you're building your audience, it's win-win. Again guys, look into it. Uh, you may want to set up your own channel, maybe you're an expert in cooking, Maybe, maybe your intro, maybe, maybe your intro is like showing people how to, how, to, how to create the latest or a beautiful strawberry cheesecake, right? You're showing people how, how to create a strawberry cheesecake, and then at the very end it's like, oh guys, I hope, you, I hope you loved my video. By the way, the product I used in this demo is the spatula or whatever. You can get, you can get the spatula, spat, spatula in the product description below. You don't think that's powerful, guys? It is. Blogging, newspaper. Again, guys, this is down the line. This is about building brands, connecting with people, connecting with magazines. You know, we have two people here today that um, I've grown friends with. They own a radio. They've got the radio show talk. You know, it's about, it's about you, know, you know, Jeff Je and, you know, I, I don't want to mention too many names, but they have a radio show and they brought me on the radio show. Again, I'm learning from them. They're learning from me. We're spreading the word of e-commerce, right? Yeah. Plug. I, I don't want to plug everything. Um, Bing ads. Okay, so let's get into the Facebook ads. Let's get into the Facebook ads. Okay, here's what I did. Here's what I did. Okay, I was, I was daunted, confused. I learned the Chris Record $5 method, okay? And I treated like every dollar was an investment, right? Every dollar was an investment. I wanted to make the most. I wanted to analyze the data. You know, I was coming from the business analyst background where you know I'm looking at numbers all day long right and I know it sucks but numbers actually becomes quite interesting when you learn the data right when you can export your data um, Facebook changes you know uh, so you've got to be able to adapt right removal of affinity that's why I do flex targeting uh, test 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 uh, as, as we grow and scale our business guys we do we're gonna have to ask Facebook to increase our spending limit right so our spending limit is the amount of money that we can actually spend before we build, right? Everyone's got a different threshold, right? So know your threshold. Again, guys, I'm a big believer in, number one, if we're on Shopify, guys, we should have a really good support structure, which we do. If we're on Facebook and we're paying Facebook, we should have a good support structure. Everyone should be able to email someone or pick up the phone. Um, a lot of, I do email. Um, and just ask, you know, what's going on with my ad account? You know, I value you guys. I'm sure you value me back. I want to know my data. I want to understand how do I increase my, my limits, etc. right? Again, guys, building relationships. Um, don't be afraid. Uh, when it, so when I was in corporate, right, here's what I learned. Right? Super powerful. I learned that the person sitting down at their desk working all day long is even though he's doing a great job, he's making it difficult. And here's why. You're trying to figure out a problem, guys, but here's the thing. Someone else has, come, has already solved your problem 100 times over. So what I used to do was I used to get up and network. So I would, I'd be running, and next thing, Excel would come, up with a new, would come up with a new update, and I'm trying to do a pivot table, or I'm trying to do a VLOOKUP, or I'm trying to you know, put together a presentation that I had to have done in an hour's time. I ain't, I ain't spending the next hour on, on, my, on, my, on, my, on my laptop. I'm making a phone call, and I'm like, hey, where are you right now? 
and I'm going over and I'm saying, hey, can you fix this for me? And let's get a drink later. Or, you know, well, not a drink, but you know. I got, you know, you get, you, get, you get what I'm trying to say? So if I have an issue with affiliate marketing, I'm calling Chris. If I have an issue with sales, I'm calling Peter. If I have an issue with Shopify, I'm calling Lawrence. If I have an issue with you know, my product, I'm calling my supplier in China. So you, you, get, you get what I'm saying? So again, guys, Facebook is transferable skill. Um, learn it, love it. You may not like it now, but when you see what the ability you can do with it, that's when it becomes exciting, all right? Um, okay, here are the metrics, guys, okay? So I want you guys to know the metrics, know your columns, because uh, when you're analyzing your data, guys, these are the individual columns you're gonna wanna know. You're gonna, know what, you're gonna wanna know what they represent, and you're gonna wanna know why they're, why they're important to you, right? Okay? First one, reach. The number of people who saw your ad at least once, right? So this is different from impressions. Impressions, multiple views, right guys? So your reach is, you launch an ad today, I launched one ad today, uh, this morning at 12.01, it's now like 3 p.m., how much has my ad been shown to? So I've reached 3,000 people and I've spent $5. So that's a good indication, guys, right? Frequency. The, the average number of times your customers saw your ad. Now here's why frequency is important. So remember I told you about flex targeting. Flex targeting, right? So say I have an audience of this beer um, married Texan man, right? And if I have an audience of, it, it turns out to be 200,000, right? Okay? If I'm after eating into this audience, my frequency is gonna go up. Right? My frequency is going to go up. That's super, super powerful, right? When your frequency goes up, that means you need to expand your audience size, right? We want our frequency down as low as possible. The frequency should be about 1, 1.1, 1.2, all right? What's the point in showing the same ad, right? When you show the same ad, it's going to lead to banner blindness. Banner blindness is when people start ignoring your ads, and that's a bad, bad thing, guys. So when people start ignoring your ads, two things you can do, remove the flex or create a new ad creative. So instead of showing the same 1200 by 1200 pixel, why not run a video ad? Why not run a, run a 1200 by 1650 ad? Why not run a carousel? So these are all things that you, you've got to understand. You've got to be willing to put the time into understanding why these columns are so important. Okay, CPM guys, the average number cost of impressions. And again guys, for some people this is basics, but I'm still, I, I'm still learning all this stuff. I'm still becoming a master at this because this is what is gonna determine whether or not you shut an ad off or not. This is gonna determine whether or not you shut off, and, and that is a big decision you have to make. Because when you shut an ad off, it's very difficult to get that momentum back up. Uh, so you've gotta be, know what you're doing, okay? CTR, right, the percentage of time people saw your ad and performed a click, and my favorite metric of all, well, it's not my favorite metric, but my favorite metric is purchase, but uh, my cost per click link. The reason why the cost per click link is, which is basically, they saw my picture, right, they saw the ad, they saw the copy, and they performed a click, right? The more clicks, guys, the more clicks, the more Facebook is gonna realize that this is a high performing ad and this is a product to a customer match. So you want your cost per click as low as possible. I aim for a cost per click of less than 50 cent. Here's why. I wanna get as many people to my website at the cheapest possible, in the cheapest possible way, right? So if a thousand people go to my website and only 10 people buy, I don't mind. It's, it, it, you know, the, 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 the cost is the issue here. High cost per click link is gonna affect your conversions, right? I want you guys to focus on that metric, cost per click, link click, all right? And make sure you're picking the right column. Okay, uh, Peter, how are we doing for time? You want, you want it, you want it? Okay, let's do it. View content, guys, number of view content, add to cart, um, purchase, um, purchase conversion, what's the total purchase conversion of, uh, of the actual fire? 
uh, let you take a picture of it. Cost per purchase, relevance score, guys. Relevance score is how, how related the product is to the actual targeting. Um, the amount spent today, again, something a lot of people don't look at, but you should look at it, because the amount spent today actually tells you, is there an issue with Facebook? You know, why are you spending too much? Um, is your cost per click too high? Etc. And then the amount spent total. The amount spent total, guys, is going to allow you to calculate your ROAS. Your ROAS is your return on ad spend. So if you spent a thousand dollars in total and you made four thousand in revenue, we're looking good. We're looking good. Okay, again, guys, I'm going to go through this quickly because Chris preaches about it. Everyone preaches about it. Right now, if you're running auto bid, you got to be doing low budget, multiple ad sets. High budget, auto bid doesn't work, guys. If you want to do that, experiment with manual bidding. Manual bidding, guys, but right now, low budget, test, 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 duplicate, duplicate, cut, 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 scale. Right, guys, you can take a picture of that. Um, again, guys, a stale start coming in, scale, know your magic metric, email marketing, retargeting, and guys, don't be a bit afraid to spend money. Here's why. Back in the 80s and 90s, when you needed to set up a store, right? A retail brick and mortar store. Right? Say you were setting up a butcher store. You needed to pay light and heat. You needed to pay for inventory. You needed to pay for, uh, for um, a register. Think of all the costs that went into building a brick and mortar. And we're here with a laptop, and we're afraid to spend money on ads. So guys, spend money. You've got to spend money, collect the data, and grow. Okay, guys, a little meme, you know, this is, this is how I feel sometimes on the far right when Facebook make, makes changes, you know? I'm like, oh my God, you're killing me. You made a change. But it's okay, guys. We're going we're gonna to take that change and turn it into positive. Okay, guys, we're coming into the latter part of the presentation. We've got about 20 minutes to go. How are we looking, Peter? Do you want to wrap it up? All right. Okay. So hiring, guys, can I take on this extra work? Okay, uh, is there enough work to justify? Don't just hire someone unless you have actually a plan of action, right? Okay, are they culture fit? All my team are a culture fit. Like Don, Don's team, when I, met him in, when I met him in Bali, all his team had a, had a common goal, all right? Uh, take, take through a uh, case study, um, you know, test them out. As a general rule of thumb, if you're able to hit on paper at least 20 hours per week, where to work, then the chances are it's time to say welcome aboard. All right, guys? Uh, here's my current organization. Take a picture of it. Um, it's what works for best. Uh, remember, guys, I want to I wanna direct communication with my project managers, and I want my two project managers talking together. I do not want to be dealing with multiple different threads. I'm focused on, on my two experts, which I'm paying a little bit more. Okay? That's what's working right now. Enjoy work, have fun, be creative. That's the, that's the culture I'm building. You take a picture, guys? And I'm constantly hiring. Look, guys, my pipeline. I'm, I'm, ready, I'm ready to hire. OK. Uh, then again, guys, there's some more avenues you've got to think about. Your suppliers, your banking, your PayPal. Do not do, work well with PayPal, guys, right? Please. PayPal will put you in trouble if you're, if you're, if you're doing things illegally. I want you guys to treat them as a partner. If you treat your business well, they look after you. Friends, mentors. USPS, tax and accountancy. These are all things that you, that you need, right? Branding. Um, again, guys, as we grow on scale, we're going to look at branding, creating our, new, our own products. Um, you saw the necklace I had earlier, guys. Um, you know, it, it, came, it came about from a, a phone call. Someone said, hey, can you find me this necklace? And I was like, sure, let me, let me, let me see what's going on. This is what happened. I saw, I saw the image. And I was like, how can I turn this idea into a product? And I worked, worked, worked day and night to get that product in before Christmas. OK, that's the packaging. I'm a branding guy. Got to look good. You know, got to look good. Individual packaging. That, like that did wonders for my, for my, for my, for my thing. OK, right, we're going to summarize, and we're, we're going to let you get some rest. Um, so basically, guys, I talked about first having a mindset. Your mindset dictates a lot of the actions and the goals you created. 
you know, being around people like Chris, he's taught me to get my mindset right, okay? We discussed the four principles of marketing. Anybody know what the four principles of marketing are? Anybody hands up? Yes. Yes. For that, I'm going to give you a hat. I'll give you a hat after the, after the class. Okay. So we looked at ways of improving our Shopify store for conversion, making sure our, our store looks good. Um, we talked about the art of Facebook ads. Okay. We talked about a great team. Right, guys? This is a, a team that we're, we're trying to build and nurture going forward so that we can do other things to add value to the, to the business. All right? And we talked about the vision. Once, or again, it's about getting our skill levels up and our fear levels down. Example, I want my Facebook ad skills to go up and keep going up so that I'm able to experiment with more things because I'm not afraid anymore, right? So guys, um, I don't think I have time for questions. I'll, I'll let Peter decide that, but basically, um, if you want to follow me, I do a lot, a lot, a lot of Snapchat, a lot of daily feedback. I do Facebook Live, I do Instagram. I'm always, 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 always online. Always online. So you can follow me here. Um, it's been a pleasure talking with you guys because I see a bit of me in ye six months ago. That's what I see. I'm very passionate about this. I'm very passionate about this, guys. And I see a lot in you, right? And uh, anyone can do this, right? Anyone can do this. So, guys, pleasure, take action, hope you learned. <laughs>